Ecclesia kids, I'm Avery. This week we are going to be learning about one of Jesus' many miracles, a time when he calmed a raging storm. We loved seeing all of the pictures of the craft that you sent in last week, so don't forget to have your parents keep sending those to kids at ecclesiaeugene.org. Similar to the Romans, first and second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews and the Book of James, first and second Peter, and second third John. Jude in Revelation, he himself bore our sins, his body on the tree, that we may die, sin and live, live to righteousness, and by his wounds we have been healed, 1 Peter 2.24. Hey everybody, Teacher Nick here. Okay, so this week we got some epic fan mail and I want to show it to you. Ella sent in this picture. It says, Dear Teacher Nick, I love you and I miss you. Thank you for leading worship. And then she drew all these hearts. She drew the smiley face. She put all these stamps on it. Oh, I love it. And then check these out. Trevor, Connor, Kaylin, and Austin each drew me a picture. They drew a picture of me playing the guitar. They drew a picture of me dancing in front of a flower. They drew a picture of a dog and a puppy. And then Austin drew a picture of a dog at a swing set at a park. I love this. Okay, so then check this out. They said they wanted me to learn four songs. They're the best. It says, we want you to learn oceans, every move I make, Hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. And then Austin says he wants me to learn Silent Night. Do you guys know the song Silent Night? You don't? Well, I haven't done it because, well, Silent Night is usually a song we sing at Christmas time. And I was thinking, because I love Silent Night so much, I'm gonna give you a little taste of what that song sounds like and then in the month of December, don't worry parents, I won't start early, even though I want to. In the month of December, we are gonna sing Christmas songs and it is gonna be the best. We'll have to take a little breaky poo from, well, the songs we do every week and we'll have to do Christmas songs. Okay, so Silent Night goes a little bit like this and I'm just gonna sing a little teeny tiny part and well, then in the month of December, which isn't for a few months, we're gonna sing that song. It goes like this, it goes. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the unvirgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. And then it goes really, really high, it goes, in sleep in heavenly peace, Sleep in heavenly peace. <laughs> awesome. Austin, thank you for sending in that song. We are going to do that in the month of da, 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 December. Okay, so keep sending in your mail. I love reading it. It means so much to me. And I love seeing the pictures that you draw and the songs you want me to learn. And hey, each one of you that's wrote me a letter, I've now wrote you a letter back and it should be coming in the mail. So make sure you tell your mom or your dad, we gotta go check the mail because we might see our letter from Teacher Nick. And hey, keep writing because I love it. Okay, so for today, we're gonna sing two songs. Then we'll take a little breaky poo. And well, then we'll come right back and sing two more songs. And well, then we'll be all done and we'll get to do it again next week. Okay, so for this first one, we're gonna sing, my God is so, 
Come on. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for, for you. Okay, I think you got it. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God can't. Hello, are you sleeping over there? You can't be sleeping, we're singing. So get them up, get them up. I need to hear you sing, 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 sing. And well, if you're not singing, well, then you're not helping. And if you're not helping, well, what are you doing? So hey, remember, sing as loud as you can, but if somebody is sleeping, maybe your little brother or your little sister is sleeping next door or in the other room, you might not want to sing too loud because, well, we don't want to wake them up. Sleep is very, very important. Okay, let's do it. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. <laughs> awesome! Okay, we're gonna sing one more song, but I no longer need my capo, so, well, goodbye. Boink. We'll sing one more song, we'll take a little break, and, well, then we'll be right back. Okay, so, for this next one, we are gonna sing Jesus Loves Me, because it's so, so, so important that we remember, regardless of what we do, as long as we seek forgiveness from Jesus, he loves us no matter what. But it's important to make it right. So, hey, we can do that by saying, Jesus, please forgive me. And we need to know that when that happens, he forgives us and he loves us so, 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 so much. So, let's do it. In Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. What is it? Let me say your muscles! <laughs> Good job. Do you want to know to how you do want to know how to get big muscles? Let me tell you. You gotta eat your vegetables, make sure you try new foods, and well, make sure you drink enough water. That makes you big and strong. You want to know what my favorite vegetable is? And if you haven't tried it, you have to. It is the best. It's a red bell pepper. So hey, if you haven't tried it, you should because they're the best. Okay, we need to get back to the song. In yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Awesome. Okay, well, we're gonna take a little break and we'll be right back. Bye, everybody. I'm Avery. And I'm Megan. 
Last week, we started learning a new memory verse, Psalm 40, verse 5. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and thoughts towards us. None can compare to you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Teacher Jill explained that this verse is uh, worshiping God for all the blessings and good thoughts he has for us. One way that we can continue in worship is by sharing God's word. One way to keep sharing God's word is by sharing your memory verse and telling everyone of his good works. You can share God's good works with anyone you know. You know, I have a great way to proclaim God's word. Oh, what is it? Look what I have. Oh, cool. Have you ever seen one of these? What well, is that? It, it makes your voice louder. It's a oh. megaphone. I don't have one of those, but I can show you guys how to make one at home. So all you need is a piece of paper and some tape, and you just roll up your paper like this, and then you have a megaphone that you can decorate at home. That's awesome. You know, let's, let's proclaim God's word together. Okay, sounds good. For you, you have, have multiplied, O oh Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Psalm 40, verse 5. This verse reminds us that as disciples, we are called to share the good news of the gospel. One way that you can do this is by sharing all the memory verses you've learned. Keep practicing and we'll see you next time. Now, before we get started, raise your hand if you've heard of Jesus. Yes, we talk about him a lot at Ecclesia. So as you might know, Jesus lived and traveled in the region we know today as Israel. During his ministry, Jesus performed many miracles. Why did Jesus perform miracles? Well, that is what I call a big picture question. And here's the answer. Jesus performed miracles to glorify God to show he is the son of God and to care for people. Keep that in mind as you hear about one of Jesus's amazing miracles. Jesus spent all day teaching crowds of people near the Sea of Galilee. That evening, Jesus wanted to cross over to the other side of the sea. So Jesus and his disciples left the crowds. They got into a boat and began sailing. Some of the people from the crowds followed in their own boats. While Jesus and his disciples traveled, Jesus fell asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. All of a sudden, a storm came. The wind was strong and the waves crashed into the boat. Water was coming into the boat and the disciples were afraid. Many of the disciples were fishermen. They had survived storms on the sea before, but this storm was different. It was so strong. If the water kept coming in the boat, the boat would sink. Surely they would all drown. The disciples looked to Jesus for help, but Jesus was still fast asleep at the back of the boat. He didn't seem to even notice the storm. Did Jesus care that they were about to sink into the sea? The disciples woke up Jesus. Lord, save us, they said. We are going to die. Jesus opened his eyes and saw that his friends were afraid. He got up and spoke to the wind. Then Jesus said to the sea, Silence! Be still. At the sound of Jesus' voice, the wind stopped blowing and the waves stopped crashing. Everything was calm. The disciples were safe. Jesus looked at his disciples and asked, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Did the disciples not trust Jesus to take care of them? The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus' disciples knew Jesus was a good man and a good teacher. But when Jesus calmed the wind and the waves, he showed his disciples that he is also God. God rules the sea and stills its waves. Hi everybody, Teacher Nick here. Okay, so today in our story, Mark chapter four, we learned that when Jesus got into the boat with his disciples, he fell asleep. 
and his disciples saw that there was a storm coming and a storm happening and they woke him up and they were so scared and so overwhelmed. They said, wake up, wake up. Jesus wakes up, looks at the storm while he's in the sea and says, peace, be still. Can you imagine what that would have been like to be there? Just think about it for a sec. You and I, we can do a lot. We can play soccer, we can play basketball, we can color, we can draw, we can climb a big tree, but one thing we can't do is control the weather. Have you ever been to the ocean? Just for a second, imagine. You're looking out at the ocean. You see these huge waves coming in. Can you imagine what it would be like to be able to look at the ocean and say, peace, be still. And that was happening during a storm when Jesus said that. And I think sometimes Jesus says that to us in times in our lives where there's a storm. In times in our lives when stuff's happening that's out of our control and stuff that makes us a little bit scared or overwhelmed. And Jesus says to you and he says to me, peace, be still. We need to know that our faith, our trust, and our hope is in Jesus who is in control of everything. And so this story is so important for you and for me to remind myself that we serve and love a God who is bigger than anything we could be going through and he is in control. So hey, remember that and have a great rest of your day. Can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye everybody. Have any of you been in a big storm before? Was there a lot of lightning and maybe some thunder too? Sometimes during a storm, there's strong winds or rain pouring down from the sky. Let's all pretend we're in a big storm. Okay. We can start by rubbing our hands together. All right, now let's snap our fingers. Just kind of like the rain when it starts to fall. We can clap our hands like thunder. Yeah. Now let's just stomp our feet. And then we can pat our hands just as the storm gets even stronger. Now let's do all those things real fast, okay? All right, and stop. <laughs> After all that noise, everything's perfectly still. Many of Jesus' disciples were experienced fishermen, but in the story today, we heard how they encountered a big storm and they didn't even think they would survive. They were very afraid. Have you ever been really afraid before? God knew that his people would be afraid. In our world darkened by sin, he knew there would be many things to be afraid of. If you search in your Bible, the word, word fear shows up 326 times. Over and over again, God says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid? How is that even possible? In Isaiah 41.10, God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. When Jesus calmed the sea, his disciples were amazed. Even the winds and the waves obeyed him. God was the one who created the wind and the waves. He made everything and he has power over absolutely everything. In the verse from Isaiah, God told us not to be afraid because he is with us. He is our God and he will strengthen us. Isn't it amazing to know that the God of the universe who created everything is with us and he promises to help us? Because of that, we know we don't have to be afraid. In today's story, we learned about a time when Jesus calmed a storm raging around his disciples. But what if he hadn't calmed the storm? What would he have done instead? I like to remember that sometimes he calms a storm and other times he calms his child. So sometimes Jesus calms the storms in our lives and takes away the stress and things going on around us. But other times the storms are still raging and he calms us instead and carries us through the storm. That's a good way to remember it. Let's do an example. So this candle represents something difficult in our lives, kind of like the storm in the story. And this balloon represents maybe all the worry, stress, and anxiety that that situation is causing us. Sometimes when we're really overwhelmed, we might feel like this. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Other times, uh, God takes away the storm. So like this and we're okay. Yeah, but what happens when God doesn't take away the storm? Well, what do you guys think will happen to this last balloon? It 
It didn't pop. I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's water inside this balloon. And the water represents the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit's inside of us, then we don't get uh, overtaken by the storms of this world. When he doesn't calm the storm, we can trust that he will grant us the strength to walk through it. I try to remember that worry is an overestimation of the problem and an underestimation of the God who grants us the capacity to handle it. Even if we don't feel strong enough to handle a storm, God is always stronger. Hey kids, look what I have here. A nice cold can of soda. Now here is something you should probably never do with a can of soda. This could be a problem, couldn't it? What would happen if I open this right now? What do you think? Probably make a really big mess. This reminds me of when I worry. I get all shaken up inside, kind of like this soda here, and kind of like Jesus' disciples in the story today. They were worried about the storm, and we worry about things that could happen, and that can make us scared. When I shake this, it creates a lot of small bubbles inside the can. The problem is, is that the soda already filled the can, so there's nowhere for those bubbles to go. It's creating a lot of pressure in this can. So what do we do when we feel like that? We remind ourselves of who we trust. We trust in Jesus. Just like the disciples ran to Jesus for help during the storm that raged all around them, we can run to Jesus in prayer when we're worried. Jesus told his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. If we're followers of Jesus, this verse is true for us as well. So what am I doing here? As I tap this can, the bubbles are popping on the inside. So where all that pressure was built up, it's popping those bubbles. And then we can open the can without it exploding. So next time you start to get worried, think about this little soda can. You can either get all worked up inside so that you feel like you're just gonna explode or you can turn to Jesus. You can accept the peace that he gives to us. You can obey his command when he said, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus' friends were in a boat when a big storm came. The Bible tells us that the storm really scared Jesus' friends. Jesus' friends woke him up because they were afraid. Jesus spoke to the wind and the sea, and everything became calm. Jesus calmed the storm. That was a miracle. Jesus showed his friends that he is the Son of God. Jesus has power over the things that scare us, too. When we are afraid, we can tell Jesus about it. He will be with us and he'll help us. So for our craft today, you'll need to print out the boat and the Jesus pages from our website. You'll also need something to color with, and a glue stick and scissors. The pages you'll print will look like this. There's the boat and there's Jesus. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw something that you feel afraid of on the sail. So for me, I drew a spider. For some reason, spiders give me the creeps. Even though I know that I'm bigger than spiders and that they're good for the environment, but for some reason, I do feel a little bit afraid of spiders. So when you're done drawing what you feel afraid of, I want you to color your picture, color your picture of Jesus and cut it out. And then you'll have something like this. So then you're gonna take your glue stick and you are going to glue Jesus calming the storm onto your boat. We are doing this to remind ourselves that Jesus has power over the things that make us feel afraid and that he can calm the storm of our fears and we can go to him for help. When you're done with your craft, show it to a grown-up and tell them about it. Just like Jesus cares about you and wants you to bring your fears to him, the people that care about you want to hear about your fears and talk to you about it too. You are so loved, Ecclesia Kids. 
We all worry and feel afraid sometimes, but we can bring our fears to Jesus who has power over even the storms and the seas and we can trust him in faith. See you next week. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little star. This one has a little car. Say, what a lot of fish they are. Oh, hi. I was just reading a poem from a kind of famous author. Do you know who that is? Well, if you guess Dr. Seuss, you're right. Did you know that there are poems in the Bible? Did you know that there's whole books of poetry in the Bible? That's right, there are five books of poetry in the Old Testament, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Do you remember the first week, three weeks ago, we talked about the Pentateuch. Last week we talked about the historical books, and this week we're gonna talk about Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Those are the five books of poetry. So get your little book out and First, you'll see how we underlined in green the Pentateuch, in yellow the historical books, and now we're gonna underline the poetry books in blue. So if you can get a crayon or a pencil or marker that is blue, we'll underline Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. So what are these books of poetry about? Well, the first one starts with Job. Job lived probably about 400 years before even Moses did. Now this poetry is kind of written like a drama and it tells the story of a man who was very blessed. He had a lot of children and a lot of wealth, a lot of animals. And then little by little, each thing was taken away from him. And he was tested to see how much he trusted and believed in God. Eventually, he even got sick. So he had lost everything and he got sick. Do you think finally he turned away from God and lost faith in God and cursed him? No, the Bible said that even though he went through all of those things and he was very sad, he still trusted in God through all of those trials. The next book is the book of Psalms. And many of those Psalms were written by King David. There's 150 Psalms and scholars believe that at least 73 of those were written by King David. There's a lot of different types of psalms. Some of them are songs of praise to God, psalms of thanksgiving, and some of them are even psalms of lament, which show that the author is turning to God and coming to him in prayer when they are sad or hard things are happening. A lot of the songs that we sing in church now are inspired by some of the psalms. And even some of those songs have the same words that you'll see in the Psalms. The third book of poetry is Proverbs. This book is written by three different people, but many of the Proverbs are written by King Solomon. Do you remember who King Solomon is? That's right, he was King David's son. In 1 Kings, the Bible tells us about when God came to Solomon and he said, ask whatever you want of me. Well, Solomon knew that he needed God's discernment to rule the people well, and so he asked God for discernment. Not only did God give him wisdom, he also gave him great riches. In the book of Proverbs, we learn wisdom about many areas, such as friends, family, money, and a lot more. Now, next we have the book of Ecclesiastes. That's kind of an interesting word, isn't it? Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, the last two poetry books, are both also written by King Solomon. Now remember, King Solomon was very, very rich. He had everything that he could want. Sometimes we think if we have money or friends or things or fun, that would make us happy. And in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says he had all of these things and it still didn't bring happiness we learn that true happiness and joy only come from God. Our very last book of poetry is Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon is a love letter between a man and a woman. God designed 
men and women to love each other and be married. And later on in the New Testament, God tells us that he designed marriage as a picture of Christ and his church. So those are the five books of poetry. Next week, we're going to learn about the major prophets. We'll see you next week. Genesis. Hey everybody, Teacher Nick here. Okay, so we already did two songs, and well, we'll do two more, and well, then we'll be all done, and we get to do it again next week. Okay, so for this first one, we're gonna sing This Little Light of Mine. Let's look at them up, 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 up! <gasps> Whoa, that was cool. Okay, all right, I think we got it. Let's get them up, and remember, you gotta sing loud and proud. But if your little brother or your little sister's sleeping in the other room next door, well, we don't wanna sing too loud because we don't wanna wake them up. And sleep is really, really important. Okay, let's do it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No! Okay, so before we start it, it's really, 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 really important to remember, are we allowed to scream no at anybody else? If someone's maybe taking a bite of our cupcake or uh, maybe a bite of our pizza, are we allowed to scream no at them? Well, I think there's a nicer way to say it. Maybe no thank you is a nice way to say it. But in this song, you are allowed to scream no and it's totally cool. But well, aside from this song, probably not a good idea. There's always a nicer way to say it. Okay. Hide it under a bushel. No! Okay, I think you got it. Boop. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan <laughs> it out. <laughs> I think you got it, we've done it before. But in case you need help remembering, Imagine it's your birthday, and you've opened your presents, you've hung out with your friends, and now it's time for the cake. Maybe one of my favorite parts of my birthday. You've got the candles lit, everyone's done singing, it's your moment to shine, and you have to blow the candles out. That's what you do. So in this song, don't let Satan it out. Okay, I think you got it. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we're gonna sing one more song. Oh, 
Oh, man. did I fall asleep again? <sighs> hey, thanks for waking me up. And if I ever do that again, say, Teacher Nick, wake up. Cause well, I'm not supposed to be sleeping. It's not nap time. It's not bedtime. It's not quiet time. It's singing time. So hey, thanks for waking me up. Okay, for this next one, we are gonna sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's do it. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Awesome. Okay, well, that's all I have for you today, and I can't wait to see more of your letters. So remember to write into the Ecclesia office. I'll come by the office. I'll see what you drew me. I'll see what songs you want me to learn and I'll write you back. All right, have a great day. Bye everybody. Here are some questions you can talk about with your family. In today's story, how did Jesus show his power as the creator of the world? What situations make you feel afraid? What do you know to be true about God that can help you have peace in hard situations? Thank you for joining us today. Always remember that when hard times come in your life, that Jesus has power over storms and he also has the power to calm you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear God, I just thank you that you created everything, including the sea and the wind, and that you have power over everything. I thank you for all of the verses that you have written about fear and worry, and that you will give us the power and the ability to trust you instead of to fear. I just pray for each one of these kids here that you would help them to learn that and to believe that. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next week.